Flying into Las Vegas, you can't help but notice that there's a lot of desert on every side as far as the eye can see. And still the fountains flow. So where's all that water coming from? Is the greatest sin in Sin City the sin of misused natural resources? Civilizations going as far back as ancient Persia have moved water from lakes and rivers to quench a desert thirst. It's one of mankind's oldest engineering challenges. It's no different for Las Vegas, which pulls 85% of its water from the country's largest reservoir, Lake Mead, which is fed almost entirely by the Colorado River and held in place by the Hoover Dam. An equally ancient problem, of course, is drought, and Lake Mead's waters have fallen to a once-in-a-millennium low with no sign of a quick turnaround. You can see the droughts mark anywhere at Lake Mead. There's that bad case of ring around the tub, naturally demonstrating the different stages of drought over the past 14 years. There's the widening muddy bottom revealed across the lake bed. A little bit of fascinating reading, and any, anyone can learn that Lake Mead does more than quench the thirsts in Las Vegas. The fight over those water rights in Nevada, California, and Arizona is generations old. But the politics of water take on another dimension altogether when there's no more water coming down from the sky. As a tourist, you'd never notice it. There are no mentions of a drought made to the happy traveler. The city still appears to rise from the Mojave's dust like an iced tropical cocktail. But the issue captured my attention on my second trip to the Vegas Strip last week as I imagined what it must take to keep those gardens gorgeous, the swimming pools full, those bed linens washed, and your water glass topped off. And of course there are the fountains, small and large contemporary and classic. Then there's the mother of all fountains at the Bellagio. And given this historic drought, it really does seem like a mirage. Vegas has naturally been scrambling to address any way to keep those fountains flowing. A tunnel project started in 2008 would let the city pull water from the deepest part of Lake Mead. It would be the third such pipeline, this time sucking water from the deepest part of the lake like a straw but it's hit delays, cost overruns, and even resulted in a death. As one official put it, the project is, quote, an emergency meant to avoid an emergency, end quote. Ouch. The Las Vegas Valley Water District requires conservation for residents with mandatory watering schedules and limitations on grass lawns. They'll even pay to have your grass lawn removed and replaced with rock landscaping. And homes built in the past decade use considerably less water than older homes, as much as 40% less, but that savings disappears as the city grows. Now, while golf courses must have a water conservation plan approved by the city, you're still going to have no problem finding one that looks as though it was miraculously transported from the tropics. The good news is that most courses no longer use drinking water to irrigate those greens. They're using recycled wastewater and less of it but it's still a lot of H2O for the more than 60 courses in the driest city in America. And what about those casinos and resorts? And more are focused on improvements to reduce, reuse, and recycle, with some, like the Palazzo, even achieving status as a certified by the U.S. Green Building Council's Leadership in Energy and Environmental Design, or LEAD, program. But what's all this add up to? The Las Vegas metro area now collects, cleans, and recycles to Lake Mead 94% of all water that hits a drain anywhere in the city. Essentially, the only water that isn't directly recycled back to the source is the water used outdoors. That's a pretty impressive feat, and it's worthy of note. But unless the drought comes to an end in the coming few years, every one of these measures only delays an end to the water altogether. So you have to ask, given the odds, was this whole city and desert thing really a good bet?